I'm going to tell you a story about how three scientists and some algae reshaped neuroscience forever. It all began in a pond. In the early 2000s, a group of researchers led by Carl Dyserroth, Ed Boyden, and Fang Zhang came across a protein in an algae called channerodopsin that converted a specific wavelength of light into electricity. You might be wondering, What's a little protein got to do with my brain? Well, neuroscientists have known for a long time that the neurons in our brain communicate with electrical impulses called action potentials, which are generated from a change in ion concentration across the cell membrane. Millions of these action potentials are happening in your central nervous system at this very moment while you catch a ball, or remember what you had for breakfast, or even while you process what you're seeing in this video. So Dyseroth, Boyden, and Zhang brilliantly hypothesized that if these proteins from the algae could somehow be inserted into neurons, they could control exactly when these neurons would fire an action potential by shining that wavelength of light on them. This would solve one of the largest problems in neuroscience at the time. You see, back then, electrical and magnetic stimulation were the only two options neuroscientists had available to artificially stimulate the brain. Both offered very little control as they affected thousands of neuronal circuits at a time. Think of it like turning on every light in your house with one switch. By using channerodopsin, Boyden, Dyseroth, and Jung thought that they would be able to turn on one light at a time and create a new way of stimulating specific neuronal circuits, giving scientists more precision and control. But how exactly did they do it? First, both the gene for channelodopsin and a promoter region that specified which neurons would express the gene was placed into a virus. This virus was injected into the brain of a mouse. Then a fiber optic light was implanted into the head of the mouse. When the light turned on, only neurons expressing channelodopsin began action potentials, even though the blue light hit hundreds of thousands of neurons. On a molecular level, channelodopsin sits on the neuronal membrane and when hit by a certain wavelength of blue light, allows positive sodium ions into the neuron. This change in ion concentration begins an action potential. On August 14, 2005, Dyseroth, Boyden, and Jung published their paper. This method of stimulation would later become known as optogenetics. The extreme precision that optogenetics offers allowed other scientists to do some pretty amazing experiments. In mice, they were able to target specific sets of neurons to create and modify memories. Other scientists pinpointed specific neuronal circuits responsible for drug addictions. And some scientists have repaired photoreceptors and restored vision in blind mice. These are only a few of the fascinating applications for optogenetics. Genetics. Although testing is yet to be done in humans, optogenetics offers the brightest opportunity for us to understand and improve the inner workings of the human brain.